I apologize. I was thought I was taping. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm not taping. I'm here with with Suli Khatib, Palestinian from Hizma originally. Now Ramallah used to be an armed. Anata, I never really have uh, like uh, weapons in my life. I never touched them. Never but what? I've been, Arms. I've been in uh, the. Oh, okay. All right, so let's go back. Let's go back. So hold on. Okay, so growing yeah. up, growing up in the seventies. Uh, 70s, what, 80s. 80s. What was life like? There wasn't the intifada yet. Right. So, so things were, were Palestinians were coming into work in Israel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Like, you okay. know, we, this is not always like a, a war zone. Yeah. It's not like that, of course. But, of course, it was not a peaceful or so normal situation. So right. Right. Of, you but know, you could go in and out of Israel without a problem. Right. I, you know, I was a child. So my father used to work in Jerusalem municipality at that time. Oh, okay. Because my village, basically, historically, is kind of... My community part of Jerusalem actually. Okay. Uh, until 1967. 67, they uh, transformed this area, uh, Bebas, to Bethlehem district. Okay. Even though Bethlehem. Is, yes, there is no Place connection of our, between. Jesus our Lord and Savior. Exactly. Sorry, go ahead. So there is no connection between my community and these villages with Bethlehem at all. But Okay. Uh, and then in 69, they became part of like Ramallah district. Okay, wise. you guys but, keep moving from the districts. Right, but like cultural wise, business, uh, spiritual wise. Okay. The center was Jerusalem always. Okay, and you were yeah. a practicing Muslim. I don't practice, uh, I'm spiritual, I'm not spiritual. spiritual. My You're family not... are Muslim. They're Muslims, okay. Yeah. We'll get into that in a minute. So when did you start getting a little feisty? When did that happen? When? So yeah, I, when I was like 13, 14, I okay. joined uh, informally Fatah movement. Fatah, so Hamas was not in existence no, no, it yet? No, they didn't exist yet. And Fatah was Arafat? Right. Okay, yeah. and he was all for armed, armed... Uh... At that time, like, okay. you know, when I was like uh, 13, 14, wow. you know, the... Uh, in my school, at that time, just to put things in the context, yes. the word Palestine was illegal in our school. Illegal. The school was under Israeli control directly. Got it. Okay. Okay. And so much having semantics. a flag, a flag, or uh, there was none of that yet. Uh, okay. Any politics was illegal. So some of kids like myself, we done like crazy flags on the electricity thing or okay. throwing stones and Molotov cocktail. Okay. Are oh, you saying it like it's a it's a pina colada? You're like hey, a Molotov cocktail. <laughs> no, okay. That's what happened. Okay. And uh, you know at this time also they built a settlement between my village and Jerusalem that cut the historical connection between my village and Jerusalem. Okay. Pisgadzev. Okay. Uh, Pisgad what? Pisgadzev. Okay. And was it a big settlement? It was smaller now, it's really big. It's and big, and was it mostly uh, religious Jews, Orthodox actually Jews? Actually, there were many, like, they started bringing Russian immigrants. Russian more. immigrants, okay, mm. okay, all right. And you um, didn't like that, I'm assuming, or that didn't bother you that much you know, at the like, time? You uh, as, as a good person, like, uh, growing up with values of taking care of the land, and yes. uh, connected to the land, like, basically, you know, like, the majority were just, like, not active people, just, you know. The right. majority of the population want to study and to just work. Just got to and live their life. And, live their life. And, and the, the Peace God Zev people, too, they weren't extreme. They just wanted to kind of live there. I, I, I don't know. They were okay. Just, they were just there. Of, right. Okay. But, yeah. So, but this was like kind of a direct uh, uh, threat to the space where I grew up, where we play soccer, football. Okay. Not American football. The, yeah, I don't know. know. Soccer, whatever. Right. Okay. Okay. And women also are kicking like, ass though. The women, the women's also. soccer team are doing well. The U.S. Yeah, women. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Um, yeah, we're that. good, we're good. Right, and of course, like I was connected to the Palestinian folklore, that the folklore, the music was politicized. Okay. And I played the flute. Uh, so in different directions, I became very active. Okay. Compared to my generation, reading the secret magazines, listening to secret channels okay on radio at that secret time. channels that were planning military action not military action just you know revolutionary music that okay. uh, you know ask you to like revolt against the occupation basically. okay okay and i uh, saw uh, um, at the age of 14 and five months yes me, but you remember that that specific of course yeah because it I was, was a big arrested, moment uh, oh you were arrested okay i remember that yeah. too. okay you were arrested can't remember anyway okay so they caught you I trying to forget. plan uh... no, at this time like i me and one of my from one guy from my village we attacked two israelis we stabbed two israelis in oh, order wow. to take their weapons and this uh, incident ended up with a slightly wounded for the two israelis slight well you're stabbed of course i mean yeah this yeah. is really what happened like yeah. uh, slightly injured like it's uh, like you were 14 14 and five months yeah wow okay yeah and uh, yeah since then i was uh, sent to jail okay i was the youngest prisoner for some time 
You were what prisoner? The youngest uh, prisoner. Youngest for prisoner. Some time. Uh, you know, like many Palestinians were in jail. That's not a strange thing. Right. Just, you know, right. 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 Unfortunately. So, right. Okay. Like you go to the army or to the university or something. Yeah, it's just like jail. Um, okay. So you so, and your 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 buddy both went in for the same sentence. Yeah, but he was older than me, so he got sentenced more. Okay. I was sentenced 15 because I, I became 15 in jail, and then they sentenced me in a military court. Okay. 15 years. And I spent 10 years and 5 months. So you got out early on right. good behavior? How does that work? Yeah. Or parole or yeah, whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what... what? But, uh, during this time also they blockade my room in my family house, like seal it. All of it. Oh, they seal it with the cement? Right, until I was out of jail. Okay, well then they don't have to clean the room. That's so there's a, there's exactly. a perk there. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like why? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what? Um, I'm not making light of what. You know what I mean? I, I take all this stuff very it's seriously. Okay. We but, make uh, sarcasm out of the conflict. That's but, the only way. Uh, you know, I'm just saying, and I'm not taking any stance here. I'm here just to hear your story. Yeah. So we I, can you stay know, neutral. Uh, neutral. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, is it's like Switzerland, right? In World War yeah. II, it's all bullshit. No such thing yeah. as neutral. But, but I really do see myself as a. As I'm trying to understand what the you know what the fuck drives a kid to, mm. to in general in, in the world in violence and desperation, yeah. but also what works and what doesn't. Obviously, that hasn't been working. So it's like, what does work? I mean, the mm. other side's not working either. So God yeah, knows, yeah. it's not like it's working well. Right. But um, that's my only opinion on the matter. But what in jail um, did you were you able to uh, to study a bit? Uh, read, you know what I mean? Like, what access yeah. did you have to books and stuff? So, uh, the political prisoners in yes. jail, we don't have a normal rights like Israeli prisoners. Let's okay. Say. And there is no treatment of like war prisoners. That's not the case. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, we have to struggle in jail to improve the daily life in jail. Right. It means what? We practice nonviolence. What's nonviolence? A few things. The main thing is food hunger strike. We do a lot of food hunger strike in jail. The first one for 10 days, I was 15, with other prisoners. Okay. The last one for 17 days means we don't eat. You don't eat we or drink, drink? a lot of water. You drink water, okay. A lot of water and salt. Oh, That's to keep why, the minerals so you can stay, okay. Yeah, so to stay alive. That's why it's called in Arabic and Hebrew, Mayo Mela. That's really famous. Oh, Mayo is it? Mela. Okay, okay, okay. Mind the Miller. Right. It's very right. famous because uh, that's how we stay alive. And uh, but what were you hoping to gain by the hunt? This guy's cleaning yeah, right, right we, here where I'm recording. Right. So we usually live. have 30 demands, like to improve. Like, 30. Uh, 25, 30 that's demands. A lot. Uh, part of it is like to bring uh, books without filtering them. Okay. And uh, visiting our families and like uh, the food and the treatment and stop like the. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna stop you, woman. Do you mind moving the necklace? I'm afraid the necklace is is uh, yeah. touching the microphone. Okay. Thanks, son. Okay. Yeah, just if you, can you take it off, put it here. Is that oh, okay? Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep no, it technically sound here. I love this. Necklace. It's a beautiful so, necklace, by yeah, the yeah. way. I like it. And one of them from South America, actually. Oh, really? Okay. Nice. Okay. I want to paint the picture here for a minute. We're in a, in a park in Tel Aviv. I have an Ethiopian gentleman here. It's a very diverse community. We have Arab music filtering out of the coffee shop, which is the Gay Pride coffee shop. We have a bunch of people in tight spandex doing yoga or some sort of weird yeah. stretching here. And I'm here with Suli Khatib. So that's melting pot right here. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So this is the main tool we use in jail, which means the conditions in jail Improved always after the hunger strike. It worked. Succeed. It actually worked. Yeah, yeah. Did, were you able to get fresh? So that's answer a question for many people regarding to your comment. Yeah. How to convince? I don't have the answer, but I'm just saying. Yes, please. How, this is a big question everywhere, especially, especially for people like Palestinian people, for example, here, and also intellectuals in the US and other places. How to convince people that nonviolence work? Big question. Right. For me, I learned this in jail in a practical ways. Read. Before I read about yeah. uh, Martin Luther King. Okay, and other okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so of course it made uh, different conditions to succeed. And that meant, so we got a library. Oh, jail. wow. I worked in the library and I studied history and uh, our narrative, uh, the Israeli narrative, the story. I learned Hebrew. But it was like learn your How'd you learn language. Hebrew? We te I knew a little from home. My okay. Spoke Hebrew. Okay. But in jail, we teach each other English, Hebrew, French, uh, history, everything. That's amazing. But, so you got in with a good group of people there. Right. But it's not a university. So we used, yeah. to, we used to call it a revolutionary university. Okay. Are you? We revolutionary to, university. Are that's you? That's what we okay. used to say. So it's not like the nicest university in the world, right? Well, it's not okay. a peace academy also, jail. Yeah. Just yeah. to make sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it could be a place that some people transform, change there. No, I think that's amazing. Because yeah. I think you're right. When you're in jail, 
two things can happen. You can get angrier and more bitter and plan you, whatever yeah. you're doing when you get out. Right. Or you can be like, okay, I have 10, 15 years to be here. I might yeah. as well improve my daily condition. So you're kind of thinking micro. You're not oh. thinking map. You're like, I just want to improve my daily conditions here right now. That's true. And I would say we never like thought like in jail that I will spend this time in jail. Do you always dream that freedom is coming tomorrow? Right. So you think like in what they say, one leg in reality and practical needs every day in yeah. the room and the small place. And Did you have a roommate? Yeah, like I, we have to, I have 10 people in the room. 10 people in the room, and okay. And one leg in the dreaming because yes. you know, there's a lot of spiritual, maybe that's important, a spiritual resources to keep you uh, alive in jail. Not yeah. just physically, spiritually. Of course. You have to be strong. So, for example, we used to sing, they can jail our body, they can jail our soul, and right, all that. Right. Otherwise, you go crazy. You, you know? go insane, okay. of course. It's still very hard, of course. It's like there's torture sometimes, there's tear gas once I hear. Okay, or twice. was there a riot? Like, yeah, so okay. when there's a riot or problems or something, the yeah. tear gas was a normal thing that like, happened in jail. Okay. Every once a while. Okay. And they transform prisoners from jail to jail. There are a lot of problems in jail. Uh, so you need like really to focus on the free spirit and your freedom inside you than the physical one. Now, That's was there any, deal, um, yeah. I'm interested in knowing, I don't know if there was the budget for this, but was there any attempt to, um, to, I don't know how to say it, but to talk to the, from the Israeli side, to talk to the prisoners and, and talk about mm. improving their, men, you know what I mean? Not improving their mental state, but coming out with a different approach. And to and pursuing, you know what I mean, stopping mm -hmm. their violent upright. Was there an attempt at like workshops Look, or something? Uh, the, there was awareness by the prisoners not to be brainwashed. Okay. Which we some people like will listen to this and say, oh, I was brainwashed. This is also like accusation can happen. So the prisoners, the program, the cultural programs, we have it depend of each organization. We are divided by different political organizations. Okay. Each organization have its members sitting five times a day for sessions. In the prison? Yes, if you are a popular front, means you are communist. I was not, uh, for example, and they teach communism, for example. Oh, wait, you mean talking about the other Palestinians in, in, in jail, jail with in you? No, I just meant from the Israelis, was there like, so, oh, let's bring a psychologist no, in? No, for let's the Israelis, we, it's another story for the Israeli administration. Uh, they didn't intervene we, in what was going on in the prison. They did. The, okay. uh, many of these things that I'm talking about was kind of illegal and legal, like they know about it, but they sometimes make it harder. Uh, I, there was for, for the prisoners and the Israeli administration, yes. the relations are complicated because for the prisoners it was another like stage of the struggle and the prisoners don't want to have the Israeli administration playing in the cultural... Okay, they wanted to like, keep out. They wanted to as keep... Much, okay, okay. As much. That's also like some part. And I don't know how much the Israeli administration was interested to like, you know, let the education happen and... Uh, Right. And well, that's a big uh, conversation, anyway. It's, I mean, look, it, like, it's, it's a problem in prisons in, in America, you know what I mean? Like the rate of recidivism, you know, obviously people right. that come out of prison and they go back in. It's like, how do you rehabilitate people? It's and, a very and, different you know, situation. Yeah. There is similarities, obviously, everywhere, but there's right, also right. the difference. Yeah, of course. Just taking out, yeah, yeah I yeah. get what you're saying. Okay, yeah. so yeah. you finished your sentence, and at that point already you were like, nonviolence has worked for me in prison. How, when did you want to become more, still remain an activist and say, why don't I just go back home and start working in, in whatever, open a, a ceramic yeah, pottery shop? Yeah, okay, so my life personally is really connected to this place and to this complex. Fortunately, I, for, unfortunately, I don't know, because uh, I feel I have a mission. And of course, I'm not always like active 24 hours. Yeah. I have my life also. And, uh, you have to maintain uh, your well-being also, and to take a break sometimes and all that. So it's not like a... So, yeah, but you know, like I, uh, I care about this place and the people that lives here on both sides, of course. And uh, in jail, you know, many things change. For example, the first thing I learned in jail, there is no military solution for this conflict. Right. Yeah. Which is many people think this. Like, way. wake up, everybody. Yeah, but until you wake up, it takes time until you are there. So. Yeah. Um, uh, and many other like things, you know. We I saw the first time you saw in the movie Disturbing the Beast. First time I know about the Holocaust, I saw it in a documentary. So they don't uh, teach any of that of it the was Jewish in the history Israeli in the school. school. No, but we read by ourselves. Like we, we, like some of the prisoners are very educated and they teach each other. Okay, but yeah. people that aren't in in prison, That's people that have not, story. they don't in no, and the schools there they don't. Let's teach. say this: Palestinians are not Zionists. 
Okay. So okay. we're not teaching like uh, uh, why the Zionian. state of Israel of came course, into being. And why symbol of course not. And the other way around. Okay. Israelis are not teaching the Palestinian narrative. That's we are not there. And that's oh, the obviously. problem, isn't it? That's it's a big, big part of the big problem. Of the problem. Of course, because of the um, recognizing the other side between two breaks, the other side narrative, it makes you afraid that you lose your own narrative. So that's how the majority thing. I'm not there anymore. I'm in a different place, of course. Yes. I can feel and see the multiple narratives of this conflict, but so we have to keep trying. Yeah, yeah. once you came out, because obviously someone who goes from stabbing soldiers to now, you know what I mean, nonviolent resistance, so to speak. Did you encounter resistance? When you came out and started kind of becoming a nonviolent yeah. activist, did you encounter resistance amongst your peers? Or like you're like a yeah. sellout and like what the fuck you've been brainwashed or what mm. you know how did they like don't be a pussy like you know what I mean like yeah, don't just yeah. sit here taking it don't be a victim like we have to what what did you encounter in your community all of what you said okay and more, and more. Like, yeah I can say this like there is also like timing you know I'm talking about time after Oslo yeah agreement and uh, there was a lot of conversations you know and optimism about two state about uh, peace agreement and all that. So I would say some of my like uh, ex colleagues in jail, some of them like also changed like myself, maybe not to the same level. Uh, some because my, by the way the main community that knows Israelis are the prisoners <laughs> because they are the one knows Hebrew and do, like knows the Israeli story. Oh, interesting. Generally, well, not all of them study of it. Course, of course, yeah. of course, of course, not everybody. Yeah. And even the one study it doesn't mean they change. But of course, learning the language and the culture and the narrative, it does help. That's of my course. experience. Yeah. And I can give you an example even from my Israeli colleagues right now, from my Israeli friends, they learn Arabic in the army and some of them change through that. Right. And that's what changed me also. Part of the reason is the language actually. Like when I learn, then I saw a different narrative. You know, long story. The, so the prisoners, we can't put the prisoners in one uh, bucket. Yeah. Uh, some of the prisoners definitely came back to fight in the second father. Okay. Because you got, uh, you learn a lot and you became stronger. Right. And you have a street credit and all that. Of course, like some support, uh, like what I do, some not, and some, as you said at the beginning, like they just go back home and they just don't uh, activate their political agenda anymore. And of course, like you, when you change, it doesn't happen in my case, like in one minute, in one time. It's a long journey, and definitely I lose friends, I lose yeah. family, right. related, right. relatives, for example. Are they pissed that you're friends with Israelis? They see some, you as a traitor? Of course. Uh, well, it depends who you ask. Some people okay. more like criticize what's called normalization with uh, occupation. Okay. That's a big uh, term, and it's not just a Palestinian thing. Actually, I heard from other conflicts. I am okay. also involved a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. in a conflict resolution, like studied a little bit, traveled a bit. I mean, in Ireland and other places, this word exist here in Arabic, the normalization for right. Fatbir, but it does exist in other conflict areas, the same, Okay. With different, uh, the same term. So what, what we say, like working with the enemy is not something mainstream, it's not accepted by many people on the yeah, which is the So you'll get criticized and attacked sometimes and uh, accused of all kinds of things, of course. So in, in, so I just curious, okay, yeah. you're saying in Palestinian schools, right? When they're learning that the state of Israel was founded, they're not taught why or what was the impetus. They're just taught that Israel, like these people came in and just took over. They're not, they don't get any of the background of like there was slaughter of six, you know what I mean? Like they flip, yeah. like there's none of that. Okay, so first of all, I, my generation, it's a different story. The schools were under Israeli control, so it was not a Palestinian like uh, education thing. Okay. Just, you know, so I okay. never got politics in my school. Okay. Period. So there's nothing to do with that. None of the history. In it my wasn't case, part of the... personally, like in, at my time, this was not exist. Like political, anything politics in the school was not exist. Uh, well, not politics, just history. None of that. Right, but like it was uh, used the Jordanian um, books or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. Organized with the Israeli. Uh, so uh, the Palestinian education system now is, of course, different. Uh, I would say this because I don't really. I don't like I don't really know yeah. very well. I okay. just what I know, neither side is teaching any legitimacy of the other side. Period. That's okay. what I know. Okay. That doesn't mean they teach hate or anything, but it does mean Well there's that ignorance. There's ignorance. People it's don't like, know about each other. Okay. And if they know also there is a lot of filter. Okay. Because okay. what we say about narrative, like you filter this with your ideology story, your victimhood and you 
Yeah. Yeah, and that's in both sides in different ways. I'm not comparing. It's a different situation in both sides. And I personally believe we should uh, teach each other like language and culture and history and narrative. Uh, even without giving up uh, our stories, you know. Of course. I mean, look, yeah. I think the biggest problem is seeing the person as the other, right? And yeah. I think that everybody also, I'm always curious when I look at different nations' behaviors yeah. and I even look at, you know, world, whatever, but like I wonder if the shoe was on the other foot, people think they would behave differently or no. Do you know what I mean? If the, the Palestinians were in the, the Jews' uh, place, would would they, you know what I mean? Or not, and vice versa. So it's yeah. like, we don't know. It's, you know, that is what it yeah. is today, but you don't know what the other person's gonna be like if I was, and people think we're all human. So my feeling is that we would all be react, you know what I mean? I don't yeah. think there's a, I don't know. So you really believe that was studying about the Holocaust that made you kind of realize, wow, these people have been suffering and not now just, I kind of get it? Not just, no. Okay. It's a few, many things that the long journey, this is part of the uh, learning. Uh, of course, the Holocaust story is very emotionally deep, and I actually saw it. We uh, uh, saw this movie with ten prisoners in my room. What that movie? Did you I can see? share with you. I think uh, Schindler's, List. Schindler's List. Okay. Yeah. I, Stevie. In my room, ten people. They were in jail for many years, like really serious, like right. fighters. Okay. And we saw the movie, so we turned the light off. Everyone during the movie time was crying. Wow. And this was very transforming moments because, and complex, I just want to share the truth yes. and honesty. Yeah. Because after we turned the light on, basically we're crying on the ancestors or grandfather or mom of the police, the Israeli police. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually we don't have hot water, so we have to ask the Israeli police. Um, we can, the doors are open, uh, closed at night, so we have to call him like... Uh, right and ask him to bring us hot water from something called a dude yeah. uh, to make the... The water um, heater. Yeah, right. so it's... Um, these are the moments of complex, but I do believe in my experience, change can really happen in radical moments. Um, so I believe like we could really like uh, activate the... We, I don't believe in uh, like total good and bad, dividing people into this category. Uh, of course not. Yeah. I do believe that uh, we could be either or or in between and but we are mixed so I believe like we could talk and activate the good sides the human sides of people I not out of naivety I was in jail I met all kind of people yeah I really believe no no people can show love and forgiveness as Mandela said like people don't born with it they learn how to hate and this is just the same Right. They can learn to. I mean, it does all get, start with education, right? How do you? Of course, there's I think, I'm wondering the religion, if the agenda, the yeah. you know, the generation. There is a lot of things to to talk about, like to change, obviously. And I do believe in self change. Firstly, I do believe. First time I read Jesus, I'm not uh, religious. Okay. I read when I was 15. You know, like because I was in a journey, like also curiosity and identity and searching. Um, you know, in jail, I have time to think and meditate, whatever, and read. You know, love your enemy. This was a very hard statement for me, like reaction from me when I read, like to feel it, to think about it, because the enemy is right there. Like it's not like something. People are the also sky. afraid that if you understand the enemy, you're going to stop fighting it, right? Like if you're like, if I That's really have I'm, compassion, then what does that mean? Am I just not going to, you know, just am I going to lose myself? My and, and, uh, yeah, but it's, just, it's, so it's challenging. I right. think a, a huge, like a deep, really like journeys if you want and brave men to cross what we call the red lines it's very hard and also you have night you don't sleep because you think oh maybe i'm cheating my homeland story my my cause my family the olive trees and later on after years ahead if we go forward now uh, i have israeli friends that also like stop going to the israeli army for example okay and they have the same the same feeling and they told me i have years i don't sleep some nights thinking oh maybe i'm like cheating my friends in the idea in yeah the army. right right so right I, I understand them because i've been there i just met this rabbi from los angeles okay in a uh, trip of one organization that i really appreciate called encounter okay and i'm one of the speakers they bring american jews to listen to Palestinian. okay it's an educational program and like a long story but like uh, he really never had like a palestinian narrative and for him, it was black, white. Israel is right, Palestinian wrong, and that's it. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, many yeah. of us, unfortunately, think this way. Right. Uh, and uh, so, anyway, when we met her, we have really a good connection, and uh, and he's like really opening up. 
It doesn't mean he became like anti-Israel. Of course not. He has a family in Israel. Of course. He loves right, Israel right, and right, all right. that. But you know, he opened his heart to see like the Palestinian story as well. There is no conflict here in my eyes. You can understand. But he really yeah. have uh, challenges in his heart and his soul. Like, uh, it's it might be betraying my people. Right. And yeah. he was saying, oh, like I didn't sleep some nights. And I just hugged him. I told him, I understand you. I was there. Yeah. It yeah. takes really a lot of time. That's why I have patience and empathy to be able what we talk about in non-balanced communication. There is one principle to meet people where they are at, not where we want them to be. Mm -hmm. It's a totally different story. That's yeah. really vision. Yeah. Well, my question to you is, why do you think, because, correct me if I'm wrong, but there isn't... You're a, never wrong. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> true. I like this man already. Um, why is there not a bigger peace movement amongst the Palestinians? Because mm -hmm. you really don't hear about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, is it, is it a mindset? Is it a cultural thing? Is it is it really kind of this? You know what? Explain that to me because it's unfortunate. I wonder if there was a massive movement. You know what I mean? Like, of again, nonviolent or yeah. just not even, but just peace, like this, this, a peace I, I protest. Like, where I is that? You. So, I just wanted to say that nonviolence and peace protests are exist, did exist, in the Palestinian community from even the British time. Okay. Not just even through the conflict, the Israeli-Balestinian mm -hmm. conflict, even before. Okay. What we call this, Sumud. Sumud in Hebrew and Arabic means the same, let's amid, to stick to the land. Okay. That's why my sister is named Sumud, because I was in jail. Oh, my I brother like was in jail when okay. she was born. So this is very important to say, uh, this the principle of non-violence does exist, but obviously the media, there is a problem. I don't want to attack the media, of course. Well, you can always attack media. Okay, I can attack you guys, but like the truth is, it's really hard to get the media attention to anything that nonviolent. That's really my experience. It's not as interesting. It's really, it's not I, as I organized myself, like, and my colleagues in Combatants for Peace and the other organizations, we organized what we call freedom marches for like two years in a row, every month, 2016-17. Uh, okay. Together, Israelis and Palestinians in a peaceful march every month. It was hard for us to get the media. And one time, one person told me, Suli, if there is no blood, we can't sell this. How is this the, is how is what the turnout? Said. How is the Palestinian turnout? So, wait, so this is one thing to mention. That, okay. does, that doesn't mean... It exists, it's just not as well known. Right, that's okay. one thing. Which And second thing, we are divided. That's the truth, I'm yeah. very honest. Yeah. Well, it exists in the very local levels. There is no a big movement of any kind anyway. Not yeah. violence or non-violence, both. Okay. So we are divided, you know, Splintered. like... Splintered. Of course, like Israel is the same, so we are divided. Unfortunately, it's hard to bring people on one table, which is a big challenge, I believe, in every other movement. Or movement. Um, I do believe that the majority of our people want to live normally. That's what my be firm belief. I grew up here in both sides. Uh, I grew up here. I don't think our people have a different DNA than the human being. Anyway, of course, there are a minority of extremists that want to fight forever or want everything. This is also. Do you believe that the majority of the Palestinians, when you say live normally, do you believe that they want to coexist? With Israel, or would they rather be like, have all the Israelis move to Detroit? Well, Detroit's actually a lot of Palestinians. Oh. But have Israel, yeah. whatever, you know what I mean? And we There's want... Palestinians there, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. maybe they... But what... Do you really believe that when they say live normally alongside? Or do you... You know what I mean? I do know. you... Do you... That's I, what I'm wondering. Okay. I wanted to say this. I can't speak in behalf of... Yeah, of course, people, of course. But I can say this. Um, uh, there was never really any serious, like, questionnaire or to check what the Palestinian people want. This right. never exists. You guys also haven't had a leader that really kind of, you felt you know, served, so we have, served we are people. divided. There is also divide and rule, like Palestinian people are yeah. divided geography also. Like, well, you have the Gaza people. Of course, you have 48, you have Gaza, you have Jerusalem, okay. you have West Bank, and then you have the diaspora and wherever. Like, right, you can. right. So it's complicated. And also there is within us, within the Palestinian community, political community, there is a lot of division. And there is no serious, like, democratic, like... Uh, is there corruption? There is a... Okay, let me say this. Of course, it's there. There is a lot of... I learn in jail, and this okay. I connect with jail. Please, that's always. My you background. can connect everything to jail. Every Saturday. We like Saturday in jail. In Saturday is a fun day. Why? Fun day. Second, we don't have meetings, serious meetings. What we do, we have games in the evening. 
In the morning we got cake. That was the only day we got cake? cake in the morning because of Shabbat. Okay. And we have a session, what we call it, because we clean it. It's on day, like cleaning day. Okay. And Fucking birds. Right, Sorry, nice. nature. Jesus uh, Christ. And we used to have a session called self-criticism. Oh, I like that. I learned this when I was 15, 16, 17. So the rule was you criticize yourself first and then you criticize your like colleague in the room. That's a healthy you know, habit. About, about cleaning Even small the, things. Small yeah, things. Vent. But it does teach us something. So uh, uh, that's not the, the real uh, situation in our city, in our leadership. In humanity, it's not. In the humanity, in relationships. Obviously. Of course, obviously not. So I would say there is, unfortunately, a lot of, we have to look in the mirror as Palestinian also and uh, with all the suffering that we have from the occupation and the conflict and this thing, uh, to put the victim on the side yeah. and to use our energy and our uh, power and to start from ourselves. I really believe of changing, change starts with myself and us and this really affects the reality because I do believe we have a big, a lot of power and energy. Unfortunately, there's a lot of victimhood. Yeah. You know, people that never been independent. Of course, like everywhere in the world, there will be accusation of the outsiders. Always. It's Always. Easy it's to, much easier to blame the course, outsider. It's course. a professional victim, professional aggressor, of right? Course. That's how the narrative is, even and in the media. Then it makes it easy in yeah. our mind. And of, yeah, course, of course, you know, like the Israelis also like have the victimhood. You know, the Holocaust and the Roman uh, kick us and all that. Right. So I know that both kind of like story in this way, and I don't think this is helpful for anybody to change our life. Of course, the system here is unjust and is complicated and we can't, like there are a lot of things, it's impossible to do them without Israeli like blessing or agreement, like the import, export, the traveling, many things. I right. can give you a list of things, even to build like on my family house because it's area C, you can't even build. It's quite, like there is a harsh reality. We have to yeah. recognize that. Okay. Still, I'm saying we, we uh, could uh, change our whole Your mindset. strategy yeah. and the mindset about this place, about the conflict, out of strength and not out of weaknesses. And maybe people think, oh, surrender. Like this principle of, of surrender course. is very challenging yeah. of the ego and of many things. And you know, like uh, uh, it takes time. Uh, I. I guess I'm trying to say, if conditions change, I do believe that in a principle, Jewish and Palestinians, like Jewish, Arab, Jewish, Muslims, whatever you want to call it, historically, did live next to each other. With they some what? They right. lived next to each other. Yeah, right, with right. some problems. I even can't compare it to historically to Europe, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Of course, there was problems always, a minority and this and that. I'm not saying our city is just perfect. Of course not. Uh, I'm just saying it's we, while the conflict happening, it's really hard to focus in the interior issues. Right. Well, That's let me ask you a question. A how does how does the the population is the population in Gaza more extremist than you, you think in the population in the West Bank or no? Because they're more isolated, they're just dealing with their own shit and pissed off at what is it? Hania? Who's the guy who runs the guys? Is it Hania? Yeah. Okay. Are they more in? You know what I mean? Like, I know that they had the issue with, they had the uprising near, the, yeah. you know, that, but... i never been to Gaza, you know, just... Oh, you've never been to Gaza? Because we're not allowed to go to Gaza, like, permits and all that, even before Hamas, just to say as a fact. Okay, do you That's have any one. desire? To that? Does that feel almost disconnected? No, people, uh, like, in our, like, people have memories of uh, nicer things from Gaza, by the way. Okay. In the history, but, I mean, not in the history, like, our, like, older generation. Right, right. Actually, but, you know, fish... In Gaza, they okay. connected to fish and lemon and even certain flowers that okay. exist mainly in Gaza, very beautiful. Okay. And many other beautiful things. And I believe Gaza people are just normal people, like any people they are. But once the people are in cage, and like for many years, and hopeless, it can create just extremism and So you think the community and, there is more extreme than the community I in the West due, Bank? Due to the real, I don't, I never been there, as I said. Okay. But due to the reality there, you know, people survive, they want to live. I, like, what's the word on the street? Do you guys, you know, is there a, a very strong desire? Like, we have to unite with our brothers and sisters, or it's kind of like, you know what, like, it's just, they're out there, we're over here, let's worry about, like, you know, because that's the challenge, isn't the, it? The reality, the dividing reality and the hopeless made a lot of people just live on the survival... In survival uh, mode? Mode than on the... Okay. Yeah, that's also there. 
And that's also leadership of fault, isn't it? Of course, of course. I mean, a, no, no, a boss, I mean, does he really get like, no, no. you know, does, does, of course, of what's, course. His, what's his of story? Of course, you know, look, people find it easily just to blame the West and the colonialism and Europe. And right, Israel. right, no, right. No, no, no. There's a lot to do that, of historical colonialism okay. in here, of course. Because if we go back a little bit, like we talked about Hamas when it starts. Yeah. Of course, there was some Israeli leaders, and it's written in the Israeli media, actually, that were interested in the policy of divide and rule, which means let Hamas like be strong in Gaza, and then Hamas will fight the BLO. This happened and succeed. That's the truth. Okay. Now, it, is it all Israeli fault? No. It's also our fault, and our leaders actually fault. And uh, so, unfortunately, this division and the no democracy, like, leadership make things much worse right of course it make people hopeless you know majority of Palestinian people are educated people and they just want to live normally and yeah. uh, Palestinian outside in this they not in the refugee camps I mean in, in Gulf state and they are they're successful people right educated and business and all that you know that's what I know of course we are not perfect people we have a lot of shit to free obviously and we have a lot of trauma also individually and as a group, you know, like there's a lot of generational trauma here. Um, so how did you start yeah. this Combatants for Peace? Did you reach out to an Israeli? Like how did you, how yeah. did the organization, how was it born? Uh, so I personally been active before we established Combatants for Peace. Like since out of jail almost I start like in two, three years I became more open to find Israeli partners. Okay, hold on, I'm going to move this. Oh. I feel like it's too far away now. Okay. I don't hope now. I'm changing it midway, but whatever. All right. Okay. Uh, do you want to test or? It's no, good? I mean it looks better now. It might have been too yeah. quiet before, but I'll adjust it. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, and uh, so I, I was looking uh, with other friends to find Israeli partners because we we have the same conversation. Both society. Okay, you want to be, so you don't want to fight. Then no, no. What about the other side is fighting? So you, there is a need of partnership of right. solidarity. Right. And. Out of this need, like basically, both we looked for each other, and uh, we we had the secret meetings in Bethlehem and Beit Jala. With the Israeli, again, you Jesus, found an Israeli partner. Jesus, Jesus is there. Jesus is Jesus everywhere. Is he's he's going to bring obviously. peace to the Middle East. Yeah. So we, if everybody just converted to Christianity, there wouldn't be an issue. Everybody will love each other, maybe. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> I'm a so, pantheist. I believe in everything. I yeah. believe in, in, in all yeah, the gods. I it's all many ways kind of to beliefs. climb the mountain. We're all just trying to survive. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Um, so how'd you reach out? You found yeah, them on so Craigslist, no, no, or how'd no, you find your Israeli through, online? Through activist organization okay. that knows both sides, and okay. uh, they brought us to meet with each other for like a year of secret meetings under underground. Underground. Because you know it was like secret, no trust, and every side thought, oh, this they might kill us or kidnap us. Maybe they belong to the army or to the. Okay, so where did you have these meetings? Around Bethlehem again. Okay, yeah. so the Israelis would come to Be Bethlehem? Bejala, Bejala and Bethlehem. But we will drive around them and make sure they're safe and everything because it was the wow. time, second father. Well, that's pretty yeah. brave, yeah. Israelis doing that? A few Israelis and with our like protection help okay. whatever, Good. at that time. Okay, good. Okay. And it was scary. Like We didn't know this will lead to uh, make an organization or uh, okay. anything. And yeah, we created an organization. That's amazing. Combatants for Peace. And uh, 2006, it was formally founded and still around. Uh, Combatants for Peace. I like that yeah. kind of juxtaposition. Because both the founders. Which Who's the founder? The founders were a few people that uh, ex Israeli army officers okay. and pilots and ex Palestinian prisoners like myself. And of course, the organization has opened to. Yeah. That doesn't fit this. Civilians. Yeah. Like a normal people. Whatever. Normal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Boring. I yeah. wonder, I'm, I, it's amazing to me, you know, this is something I never thought about before, that that um, the, the, the breeding ground for potential uh, peacemaking activists is prison. You know what I mean? It's like people are there, they have a lot of free time to educate themselves. Right? So let's send everybody to jail? No, 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 no. I'm just saying that seems like a smart place to... To tap into more of the of the population that you know what I mean instead of coming out like this is a good breeding ground they're they're there and they're they're maybe may more open I don't know let's say this just to make it clear yeah jail is not a peace academy again no no I get it, it. Does, I get that it, I do think one of the Palestinian communities that knows Hebrew they knows the Israelis yeah and they are active and also they have kind of brave like spirit the prisoners 
and the prisoners for Palestinian eyes are the hero. Okay. You know what we talk about. So that. they have clout when they come out of prison. They have of clout course. to kind of be community of organizers. Of course, of course. But that's why we talk about you know like. Mandela was called terrorist, yeah, and then yeah, he became a of peacemaker. Course. Of course, like got the yeah. Nobel Peace Prize. So, it's very similar, and that's very important to say. The narrative here is very important because if you ask Israeli mainstream, these are terrorists. Our security, like threat, whatever security. Right, right, whatever. right. If you ask Palestinian, not every Palestinian, but the majority. Okay. These are the people that sacrifice for. I'm not generalizing. I don't want to speak to everybody, but yeah. like I'm describing the reality. So it's really important to raise a little bit, like to get out of this narrative that we are the good, we put the bad guys in jail and the bad guys have to be in, in jail. We have to get out, it's very hard, I, am, you know, I know that. It's very hard. In both ways, in both ways. For Palestinian also, the Israeli army are the bad guys. And, and they're just the, the kids. Of course, of course, but for our people, this is what Ugh. they say. I go to my village, yeah. it's an area C, around Jerusalem. And what is the, can you explain the BC, ABC yeah, thing? Yeah, so I live in area A, Ramallah, and Overall is A. A. So most of the Palestinian cities in West Bank are area, area A controlled. Okay. A means controlled by Palestinian authority, both security and civilian wise. They're they're in charge. Okay. They're in charge. Area B. Israeli is responsible for the security. Palestinian responsible for the civil, infrastructure. Okay. Yeah, and the civil okay. like, uh, uh, services. Area C. It's total Israeli control. But area C is this people, but 60 percent of West Bank is area C means there's a lot of problems about the resources the water the land and all that it's all and there since 1993 the system never changed means what if you the land where people build like it's finished like there is no new zoning planning okay okay so for example my village is area b but outside of the village is c means on my family land we can't use it like let's got it okay. okay and of course then you want to be able just to be quiet there is no in my experience, I'm talking from practical experience. Okay. There is no security, military solution. Yeah. There is a human problem here. There is like people that need to be recognized on both sides. If you wish, Israelis have more like a state and recognition. We are in a different places, but there is really a need to recognize each other existence and belonging here. And last week you heard this conversation from even Bibi Netanyahu saying Palestinians belong to Europe, they're not from here or they're from Arab countries. And the other way around, there were attacks. I think this conversation just leads us to nowhere. It doesn't help anybody. We both love this place. And I don't see a danger there. Well, my question to you is, again, I guess I can't ask you what do you think of the, because I just feel like you know the Palestinian street. You know what I mean? And you know where people are at. But if bit. there was a, a um, a scenario where there is a like a a, a one a one a one state because I'm trying to wrap my head around all this. It's all very yeah, confusing. Yeah, How do you do yeah. a two state if you have a chunk of people in Gaza and you got a chunk of people here and a chunk of people whatever, right? Yeah. Um, what was if it was one state that Israel can control the security? So it, it's like there's no separate state. What does a one state look like? Where the Palestinians have rights, mm. um, they don't have the right of. I know the right of return is a big deal because the majority, right? Is, Israelis are scared of suddenly yeah. 20 million Palestinians yeah, coming yeah. in. So I get that, but would the Palestinians ever give up the right of return? That's like a no go. And in terms of just living, if they could have a good standard of living and just live and maybe not, you know what I mean? Uh, would they be okay with that? Because like, no, we want statehood. We want to be independent. We want to take control of our own. You know, mm. like, because what happened in Gaza is not a good beacon of hope for those people, right? When they yeah. had control. Suddenly, it all went to shit, kind of, didn't right. it? So, yeah. What yeah. do you think about that? Like, so I, I think we shouldn't like. I think we should uh, recognize and respect the right of self determination. I would say. Okay. That's what I think. I believe this journey together and working together to for win-win situation. Yeah. Is good for both sides and is possible. That's my belief. I you don't think it's possible? No, of course. I am optimistic. I don't That's believe beautiful. in one minute like magical solution. That doesn't exist, no. of course. But I believe it's now. It's now, I mean I mean to say, at the time that we uh, uh, recognize the real story here and not to live in denial and uh, defense. Right. And I believe what I learned in Alvarez communication something, you know, says, you know, People have the same needs, but not all the time. It's not the same needs. Right, all you got to be in sync. It's like a relationship. You know, like there's also privileges, there is this and that. So, and there's a lot of historical trauma and respect, and like it's really 
we have to be like smart and wise. Um, I do think there are multiple, there are different political solutions that can play around here. And Why things, haven't they come up with them yet? I mean, they've been I at mean, it for fucking years. For many years. reasons. For many reasons. Like, you know, like if I look, we talked about the Palestinians and being more in the Palestinian education. If we talk about the Israeli side right. also, like they also elect the right wing. So, like, you it's know. It's all fear based. It's all uh, fear based. There is a lot of fear. There is a lot of Existential like, fear. I mean, course, I get it. It's a very that. primal. Of course, there's right? all of that. Yeah. And anger and all that. And also involvement. And uh, a very important note for me. There is a lot of international and regional involvement here. It's not just the Palestinian and Israelis don't like each other and that's it. That's a very simple... Yeah, of course. This way. I believe when you put Palestinian and Israelis together, they find common ground. The language is very similar and they can manage, you know, we have the same yeah. shit, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. It, there is a lot of outside power involved in this story. Which is also good but annoying. It's, you got Europeans coming in thinking they're better than everybody that's going on here, right? It's like same with the British mandate, right? Let, let's yeah. fiddle around here yeah. and bring, you know, bring civilization over. I mean, that's, so, you yeah. talk about the colonial, no, but isn't that yeah, so part of it? I mean, what do they easy. get, you know? Yeah, yeah. that. I, I, I'm trying to say uh, things, if you look at the situation now, there's a lot of hopeless, frustration, and fortunately, and we need like really a leadership. I don't care from which side. That's not my business. That really shift, change the direction. Yeah. And for me, I believe like what we say, journey is more important sometimes than the end goal, whatever we call it. I'm not logical person to say what's the end goal, what's the frame, right. we have to go there. No, we have to build the frame together and make it together because I believe really this beautiful place, land and challenging. It is very it's, hot here, though. I don't, I got, the humidity is killing right, me. Right, but it's beautiful, like, because in half an hour, I can, you can be no, you're in right, a mountain. You're right. in okay. one hour, All right, fair enough. I mean, it's not the Grand Canyon, but right, it's, it's good enough. Not. I mean, look, so, in America, we have a lot of good nature. I hate to say it. Obviously, you do. You know and what I mean? I, I like We're, going there often, you know. Big and beautiful, big and beautiful. I, yeah, I, I think it's really like the liberation of the population here. Both sides are interconnected. That's what I'm saying. Well, I got to tell you, and maybe I can bring peace to the Middle East, but I'm in, I've been in therapy for a long, I go see a lot of therapists. Oh, I've been okay. in therapy for many, many years. Um, and when I get overwhelmed, my therapist says to me, think micro, okay, now I don't know, they're slaughtering a dog in the back? It's always the little fucking dogs that make all the noise. Um, you roll on a cigarette, you want to, yeah, you can roll a cigarette. Thank you. I feel very exotic here. We're in yeah. Israel. He's rolling a ciggy. Yeah. Um, in California, you get shot for that. So my, my therapist always says to me, think micro and not macro. So start small, right. because I think the problem is when people are sitting there, these, these so-called leaders and trying to map it yeah. out and trying to think big figure, it's impossible. And I think that they, they can't even agree on the big shit to how you're gonna agree on, you know, to never get to the little shit. But if the willingness to, to compromise on the big shit has to start with bettering the little shit, am I right? I mean, I hate to phrase it in such pedestrian terms, but you talk about standard of living, basic quality of life, basic whatever. And why aren't you in politics? Because you, I mean, this is a potential, why, are you thought about going into leadership in a way that could mm. make real change? And uh, I like to be in the visionary and activist and the grassroots level. And of course I know that real change happen also on the political level. I don't think the leaders are bad people by nature. It's not that, of no, course okay. not. Well, okay. I think the problem is the system that needs to be changed. Right. To be more included and to be more fair and to agree on some moral values, you know, of safety and freedom and dignity for people as equal since they born. If we agree in the principle, the practical part will be much, much easier. We are now, in the, you know, the high tech uh, right. centuries. Right, yeah, and, I've know, been like, interviewing entrepreneurs. Right, yeah. so there is a lot of, like, and also, like, I, from my experience, even a small example, uh, as a real equal cooperation between Palestinians and Israelis in, in science, education, in history, in, right. in water resources, and saving the birds here and the nature and yeah, many yeah, other yeah, things yeah. can really bring a lot of goodness here. I really believe in that. There's a lot of energy and power in that. Um, and you know, like about independence or not, you know, like as I said, like we have to respect the, what people want in general in all the groups. You know, in Scotland and the British, they voted for independence or not, they voted to stay with the UK, right? Right, 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 right. We don't know, like we don't well, know. Now they have the whole Brexit debacle, right? Everybody's now confused. there's all this yeah. stuff. You know, things, there's a dynamics. Things are not yes, stable, like yes. uh, freezed. And this land has changed all the time, you know. And my mom or my, like, uh, ancestors, like, we learned from them that 
This land also had uh, medicine to heal the wounds here. Yeah. That your uh, psychologist and therapist. Right. And you She's know, very good. She's a new one. I had a And actually, we have to find it in this land, not even imported from outside. Right. Because it does exist here. People have culture of history here that uh, values that we can lean on them. We can use these resources. The Absolutely. Resources. Well, look, you guys are fiery people, right? I mean, you're not yeah. exactly like da the Danish, you know no, what no, I mean? No, no, of course not. Fucking fiery. Yeah. A bunch of Looney Tunes. But yeah. I'm saying, you can smoke. Go ahead. He's, yeah, he's smoking. smoking. He, they roll their because own cigarettes jail, here. I can't. Like, uh, oh, because, because of jail what? Uh, we say because of the occupation. It's because of the occupation. I have to oh, smoke. of course. He blamed yeah. the occupation for, mm -hmm. for cigarette smoking. Yeah. That's, that's what they do. That's what they do. I, what I I, my takeaways here from this are, uh, you're right, grassroots level, education, educating, getting you know, mutual histories in the schools and really kind of targeting the, the extremists on both sides and doing more of these encounters and mm. getting people out of their primal fear-based yeah. reactions that result in, in violence and, and a very kind of, you know, dehumanizing um, approach on, on yeah. both sides. I mean, look, you know, and, and so, but look, who, who am I? I mean, I'm not the Dalai Lama, uh, but I'm hoping, it you're right, be, I could be with this haircut. I don't know where that came from. Dalai Lama, Gandhi, Gandhi. Yeah, human exactly. I'm, next. I'm a human being. We're all human beings. But I think it's amazing what you're doing, and you're, you really are inspirational. And I, I hope, um, I have about 14 listeners on the podcast, so there's 14 more people that you can convert, which, which means we're on our right way. Oh. But I hope that, um, I really do hope, because you're right, the political and the military loop is, is endless. And I'm not mm. seeing Jared Kushner coming in with anything festive anytime soon. That's a whole other thing. Uh, but getting people, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's moving and it's beautiful. And so I applaud you and keep doing, keep doing the good work. And there's that movie, Disturbing the Peace, which you yeah. recommend, which you can see on Netflix. Right. How do people get involved if they want to get involved? They can donate to Combatants for Peace? Yeah, yeah. They, we have American Friends of Combatants American for Peace. American Friends. There's no European online. friends, huh? We do have okay, uh, not that many, in Berlin. Though. Okay. Uh, but mostly, yeah. Mostly American Americans. Combatants for we, Peace. We do, we'd like to give. You guys want to fix the world, right? So, well, yeah. yeah. But hey, you know what? Fuck that. Good for us that we're getting a lot yeah. of American Friends for Peace. No, I like yeah. that. Thank you, Suleiman Thank Khatib. You. Thank you. Amazing. A pleasure. Thank you. I'm going to kick one of these dogs in the face. Uh, this is Ray Lynn Casper White. I love you all. Stay tuned. We have more coming up this month uh, while I'm in Israel. I'm talking to some entrepreneurs and hopefully talking to some more people kind of involved in the, in the peace activist space. Uh, I love you all, and I'll see you soon.